In today's day and age, you can get just about whatever 3D printer you want. There are big printers, small printers, fast printers, resin printers, filament printers, metal printers. But ultimately, there are cheap 3D printers, there are moderately priced 3D printers, and there are expensive 3D printers. But are the top tier machines really worth it? Today, I'm going to look at three tiers of FDM 3D printers to assess whether the premium machine's prices are justified. And these are the candidates. First up is the Malian M200. In the middle, I have an Artillery Sidewinder X1. And the high-end machine is the Bamboo Labs P1S with AMS. All of these machines are FDM or Fused Deposition Modeling machines, which means they melt and extrude plastic layer by layer to create three-dimensional shapes. Surely given that fact they can't perform that different then, can they? So this is the $50 entry level contender. It's not new, so I need to do a once over to check everything functions and give it a bit of TLC before we enter it into the running. New, this machine has a recommended resale price of around $150, but even for the price I paid, I'm not getting much for my money. It has a tiny build volume of 120mm cubed, no part cooling, no touch screen, and a cantilevered x-axis. On the plus side, it does have a heated bed, and whatever bed material is on this one works super well. The next entrant is the Artillery Sidewinder X1. This printer's standout features are its ability to print at extremely high volumetric rates, and for a mid-sized printer, having a very large build volume of 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters. This is the printer I've used in the past to print helmets, which you can do as singular prints at human scale. Despite it being quite capable, I've done a lot of mods to my machine. This includes stiffening the Z gantry, installing an all-metal hotend to allow printing of higher temperature materials, an upgraded mainboard with new drivers and an updated control interface, running the printer 24-7 through Octoprint, which gives me full control of the machine and a webcam feed, custom Marlin firmware with mesh bed levelling, custom lighting and a removable magnetic PEI bed. The final contender in this showdown is an amazing piece of kit. It's the Bamboo Labs P1S with AMS. This machine boasts incredible speeds and precision, which when combined with the AMS or Automatic Material System allows multicolour and multi-material printing. The Bamboo Labs printers are closed source devices, meaning that a lot of their parts are proprietary and can't be purchased anywhere but through Bamboo Labs themselves. On the plus side, the P1S has a lot going for it, namely a large print volume of 256mm cubed, a removable magnetic PEI bed, an extremely well calibrated motion system, and integrated webcam and lighting. So I've talked about some of the characteristics of these printers, but how do they actually perform? To compare, we're going to print a Benchy, a Spiral Vase, and the Cali Dragon on each machine, starting off with the M200. Unfortunately, it's no speed demon. This is in part due to the limitations of the motion system and the fact that it has no part cooling whatsoever. How's this? I'm printing in the build volume of another printer. And that is clearly evident when we have a look at the finished Benchy. It's really struggled with a lot of the overhanging segments. The top surfaces are great, and the wall alignment isn't too bad either. However, given the fact that this Benchy took over an hour and a half to print, I think if I were to give this a score out of 10, it'd be a four. The print quality of the spiral vase is a little bit better. Again, the machine struggled with the overhangs. The outer surface of the vase is pretty nice, aside from a few little zits and some seam visibility issues. It's a perfectly usable print. The internal walls are okay, there's a little bit of inconsistency with the wall alignment, so overall I'll give this a rating of 5 out of 10. Finally we have the Kelly Dragon which I think has come out as the best print from this machine, with a little bit of issues with the overhangs and the wall alignment again, but otherwise a great print. I'd give it a 6. The Sidewinder X1 did quite a bit better with its Benchy both in terms of the finished product and how long it took to print. But this was still an over one hour print for a Benchy. That's no speed racer when you've got printers that are pushing the limits doing 16 minute prints. The finished product did have a bit of stringing, but I think this is down to the use of the all metal hot end. Each of the prints I'm doing on these machines are using the same filament from the exact same spool. 
The print quality of the Benchy on the Sidewinder X1 is a lot better. The machine had less trouble with the overhangs and their wall alignment is almost perfect. However, there's still some blotches and zits, so I'd probably give it a 6 out of 10. The spiral vase from the Sidewinder X1 was also quite a bit better than the one off the Malian M200. However, it also did struggle with the overhangs. This could be a calibration issue with the filament itself, either running it too hot or having the incorrect feed rates. But otherwise, the print is good. Wall alignment is great. There's limited zits or blobs or evidence of the seam, so I'd give it a 7 out of 10. The Kelly Dragon, however, fared very similarly to the Malian M200. Again, there were some overhang issues. There was some further stringing on the part and also some layer adhesion issues which caused a horn to fall off. But all the details were recreated pretty nicely, so I'd give it a 7 out of 10. If ever there was a brand that disrupted the consumer 3D printing market, it's Bamboo Lab. This P1S, which I unboxed and gave a quick review of a couple of weeks ago, is an incredible machine. It boasts insanely fast printing, and yet has produced some of the best prints I've ever seen firsthand. This Benchy is no exception, and it's pretty close to flawless. It has no trouble with overhangs, the wall alignment is almost spot on, the top surface is amazing, and this level of quality was achieved in 34 minutes, so I think this deserves an 8 out of 10. The P1S one-ups itself with the spiral vase, with having no discernible defects that I can find whatsoever. There's no issues with overhangs, the wall alignment is perfect, the seams are invisible. What can I say, this is a 10 out of 10 print. And with the Kelly Dragon, the P1S doesn't fall far. It produces an immaculate print with the tiniest hint of stringing, understandably struggles with some of the overhangs, but is absolutely incredible. Definitely a solid nine out of 10 on this one. So there we have it. Nine different prints from three different machines, showing you what kind of results you can get from the bottom end of the barrel all the way to the top. All in all, you will get a lot better prints from these new prosumer 3D printers. However, all of the machines that I've compared today produced usable prints. If you just need a printer that produces functional parts, then almost anything will work, noting certain limitations like printing speeds and printing temperatures. However, if you want the be all, the end all and the champ in this roundup, it's the P1S. With printing capabilities like nothing I've ever seen, including multi material and multi color printing, at this price point is incredible. But regardless, I hope this comparison has been helpful to you. If it has, it would be great if you give me a like and a sub, particularly if you want to see more of this kind of content in the future. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you next time. Bye.